I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ears the Son of God discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known it is a beautiful day in the neighborhood and I'm going to transplant those that pretty the trellis I'm going to transplant the um, eggplant starts that I found on sale at Callaway's nursery tomato plants are growing like crazy let me step back let me go out so you can see better they are real full growing like crazy my youngest son brought two rain barrels from the investment property over there and I've got to get them set up and uh, adjust the gutters with an extension and let me show you the other one let's see I'll go this way more tomatoes over there doing really well fruit trees and there's the other rain barrel there's 75 gallons and they just need to be washed off and because I had them upside down and I have to have a plumber to come and fix the spigots because they froze one year and I never got around to doing it so they had these little zinnias and I got like 30% off we will pull the weeds out of here and here and I'm gonna plant or sow these seeds from botanical interest they are Clemson spineless okra and I'm gonna grow about six of them in here and Pink Lady Apple Tree is still doing well. Mm hmm And then I only had one banana plant to come up, so I'm gonna put about three okra in here. This is my pomelo grapefruit. I gotta get all these weeds out of here. I didn't have this problem at the uh, uh, investment property because, you know, I didn't have a grass and weeds I had. He just had the lawn done the other day. Um, it looks good. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I have wood chips, so I've never had problems with these many weeds. So I'm going to pull the weeds out, put more straw right here. You can see I have some, but it's been taken over. And I'm going to put some black cow aged manure that I bought a couple months ago and haven't used it yet. Pull these weeds out. And I'm going to put probably two eggplants here and one in the begonias. Um, they were on sale for a dollar. Dollar ninety-nine, I believe, at the nursery. Yeah, and I remember these were two dollars, the eggplants. And let you see what I do. And I get get my mother's angel put back into position. And that tree, I'm let me go over there because that's the tree that I did a one minute video on. And I was ready to throw in the can. And someone told me, keep it one more year. And I solicited you guys' advice. And you all agreed with me to uh, keep it another year. And it's doing beautiful. So, a lot of time nature would just take care of itself. Whatever disease, canker sore, or whatever it had at the base, below the graph line, it's mending itself. And 
these are elderberries. And I'm gonna be honest with you, one of these, I know these are elderberries right here. This has thorns on it, like my jujube tree. And I know they are invasive too. So I'm praying, cause you can see the little thorns. I'm praying that this will be the jujube tree, like the one I have at the property, because if it is, it doesn't need a uh, pollinator. And then of course the elderberries right there. And let me show you, I just discovered this, just looking at this apple tree. Look at here, that's an apple I would have thrown away. Can you see it? Let me go closer. So we may get some more. But if we don't, that's cool too. Because I almost threw this tree away. This is a 25 gallon pot. So I'm going to pull up this weed. And it's got a long root. I'm going to make sure I get in there and get that whole root out of there. See that guys? Unless they're small like that, you really shouldn't pull them up. You need to go ahead on and dig them out so you can get that root out of there. And I'm going to go ahead on and dig this one up, making sure I get the whole root. So I'm just lightly raking up the soil so that I can put my seeds in here. And I'm going to plant a lot of the seeds and I'll thin them out later if I have to. So I'm just picking up any large pieces of roots. And this looked like it was a um, banana pup or crown that was in here. Okay, so that's pretty good. And I will put one Xenia here. Put it kind of close to the edge. Just make sure nothing else is trying to come up. That's some clay type of soil. Okay, so I'm gonna put one right here. Digging down, making sure I'm not getting anything. Uh, running into any um, roots and so I'm just going to loosen this up a little bit put it in the hole and cover it up This is some real fertile soil because I topped that off with the compost uh, during the fall of the year. So this should work real fine. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, label here so I'll remember, which I'll remember. This is not my zinnia that I grew from seed. This is the one I got at the nursery. And then I'm just going to sprinkle me a few seeds around here. Actually, I should have probably put this a little bit closer to the edge. Yeah, I will. I like that better. And then I'll just sprinkle some seeds around here. Probably repeating myself. I'm sorry if I am. I can get away with it. I'm almost 69 years old. <laughs> so I'm going to open this package. 
and I'm gonna put some CDs right here where I can see them. Oh, that's too many. Let's just put some right over here. And I'm gonna thin these out later. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, maybe 10 or 11 seeds here. Okay. I'll put the rest of them up, just lightly cover them. And in a few days, we should have some okra to germinate. I'm gonna press them down because there are more birds in this yard than at my food forest. I think it's because, let me show you, the neighbor up on that hill, they have a lot of trees and they are, the birds are building nests in those trees. So it's like a meeting place. Sometimes you can see about 20 birds flying out of there. Okay, so I don't have to water this because you can see my hands are muddy. So this is cool. And now I'm going to put some seeds over here. I put okra seeds all around here. And you can see this healthy soil has a uh, earthworm. It's playing possum, but it was moving a few seconds ago. Let me see if I can catch it. It's trying to lie still like a possum, but it's alive. I'm just gonna go ahead and cover it up. And then I'm over here with the Pamela hybrid. It's a cross between a orange and a grapefruit. And you know, this tree almost died when we had that Arctic freeze this past um, winter. Nothing's growing from the below the graft line, which is good. I know this tree has very uh, short roots. So since I have a couple of okra seeds, I think I've got four, I'm gonna plant one here and one here. And if I get two plants to grow, that's pretty cool. So that's one. right there you see the seed uh, if only one comes up that's cool too but I do have some uh, straw in the um, there's two more seeds I have straw in my um, garden boxes and I'm gonna mulch these real good so that the weeds won't take over it is coming back vigorously see all the little small leaves and I cut this plant off uh, two thirds of what it was. We'll just put one little seed. You can see it right there. Let's cover it up. Okay. This is the shady part in my garden. Let me show you. See all that sun over there? Now look at that shadow right there. That's the line of demarcation. So this area here, even though it gets eight hours or more of sun during the day, it doesn't get a lot of sun early in the morning. Okay? So this is where I have the improved Meyer lemon and the Lisbon lemon that died this past winter. That's the Miho Satsuma. I've had it four years. It looks much smaller than this tree because it went into shock and almost died when we got that three degree temperature. Uh, I think it was February 3rd, 2020 or 2021. And then uh, this is the cold hardy Awarian uh, Satsuma. And you can see a lot of new leaves 
and it has a piece of fruit and I'm suspecting that we're gonna get more. Okay, so these leaves are doing really well, flushing out. And these were the marigolds, French marigolds that self-seeded and stayed there dormant all during the winter and came up in the spring. And I distributed them pretty evenly and put them in these two containers. I might actually pull a few of them up because I know I can play around with marigolds and they won't go in the shop. And I may put some over there after the okra comes up into that grapefruit uh, container. But over here, I roughed up the soil, and this soil, this uh, garden uh, container is bigger than it appears to be in the video, and it has a real deep pocket here. So I'm gonna put two of these eggplants here. Let's see if I can coax it out. Okay, so I got them out of the containers, and I roughed up the roots a little bit, and I'm gonna put one here, and then one here, kind of diagonally, and then maybe I'll put a marigold or something in the middle, okay? So let's just dig in here and get a, I love to get my hands in the dirt and get a good deep hole there. And I removed the yellowing leaf, press down, so I don't have any pockets of uh, water to, you know, make the root soggy and get root rot. And then I'm gonna pull this out. It's a lemon uh, root. And I'm gonna put the other one about right here. And cover it up. And press down. Let me just show you, I pulled some of these leaves off that look a little yellow. I'm gonna hit this up with comfrey tea. The uh, soil is wet, not wet, but you know, moist, cause we got a lot of rain, so I don't have to water in. But I'm pressing everything down, and I always make sure that I have, can come back and put some compost around here so I don't want it up too high, okay? But I think that's gonna grow very well right there. I'm gonna move on to this one. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the weeds up, plant that one uh, eggplant right there. Here's a pearl from Cheryl. You see all of this green here? A lot of people consider it a weed. It is called purslane. And what a lot of people don't know is they should really not pull it up, but grow it, cultivate it and grow it. I grew a lot in my food forest. Now, this is not purslane. This right here. Let me show you. If I can pull it out. That's not purslane. That's a weed. But you see the difference? This is purslane. Purslane has a lot of beneficial uh, properties. It has a more omega-3 than salmon does for the you know, for a small serving of it. So you could sprinkle it in your salad. If you have high cholesterol, grow you some purslane. Now here, I dug some of it up right in here. Right here is the eggplant. I put the two begonias, like I told you, and I dug some of it up and I started putting it in here, but I thought I better wait and just show you. Just take your little finger, slide it in, press down, space it out. It grows wild, but you can buy the seeds. I have before. When I started doing uh, a lot of research and I found out, uh, this is a part of a tool that broke. Um, I found out all the health benefits for it. I started growing it from seeds. And then after a while, you get so much of it in your yard, you don't have to grow it by seed. This purslane uh, came from my daughter and son-in-love um, backyard. Okay, and these are those little feeder roots of the Meyer lemon that was in here. Okay, so now we've got some purslane growing in this container and some growing in this container. Actually, I think I could pull up a couple pieces. Let me see. 
Yep, that's a nice rooty piece. Let's put it right here in the middle. And just let that take off. Okay. So that's it for right now. You remember the other day I told you that my daughter bought some uh, plants? Well, they're real busy folks. When she takes Bria to gymnastics and David takes Brian to karate and music and all city choir. And she just didn't get around to planting those uh, transplants she got the other day. So she called me on the way from work. Mommy. You know how they do when they want something done. Can you please? So I'm gonna go plant those next. I'll take you over there with me. Here are the plants that my daughter um, didn't get a chance to uh, transplant yet. There are four potatoes and some thyme. The first thing I'm gonna do is, I have a few extra seeds and she wasn't using this bed. So I just sprinkled these market turnips in here. And guys, these taste just like potatoes, if you cook them like potatoes. Market turnips from Baker Creek. Now, you can cook the leaves too. So I'm gonna cook the leaves in some greens, but I'm gonna take these in the house and wash them up real good. And I'm gonna peel these and mash them and boil them and mash them like potatoes. And I'll cook the greens in something else. And she told me to go ahead and just pull up this little grate here. So the roots will have a, ch a chance to, um, grow all the way out but these little dwarf tomatoes they won't get that tall some of them have tomatoes on them already okay guys so i decided to come over here and pull some of these um market turnips over here and as you can see they don't get real big like the uh purple top turnips but some of them get a nice size three days ago i told you that we will have some string beans real soon can you see them can you see the little stream beans yep we'll harvest them in about another two weeks guys i picked up this cement tray with all this compost and look what i found up under it keeping warm that's a big snail so let me go get some tissue because that one's too big for me to pick up you can see it moving <laughs> Give me the creeps. I gotta get it out of here because it'll really eat up your plants. I want to show you how I planted her little uh, sun sugar cherry tomatoes. I laid it on its side. Okay. And then I'm going to bend it up like so. And then push, push all the soil around. I don't have my tripod but you can see what I'm talking about. Let me try to show you just a little bit by bringing the soil up like so. Okay, I'll come back. Now, let me tell you why I planted the tomato transplants on their side as opposed to straight up and down. This, this garden bed is only six inches deep or six inches in height. So the roots won't have a lot of uh, room to spread unless they go out horizontally, okay? So that's the reason why I'm planting these like this. As you can see here, I planted the dwarf cherry tomato here, one here and one here. And I want you to know that I put the lemon thyme in the middle and that is because Thyme is an excellent companion plant for that nasty hornworm that likes to eat up your tomatoes. Also, it has been proven that by some gardeners that the thyme will also enhance the taste of the tomato. Now, I don't have any scientific, uh, you know, reasoning that I can cite you it's just some gardeners believe that to be true. So the thyme will spread and act as a ground cover. 
and the tomatoes should be fine in this spot. Okay, so this concludes this video. I hope you learned something or perhaps maybe I encourage you to grow some groceries in your backyard. And remember when your adult children use that baby voice when they ask you a question, get ready because it's something they want you to do. <laughs> Okay, guys, you know that I love you and God loves you, too. Thanks for watching. Bye now. Bria and I are getting this order ready so that we can ship it. And we always take pride in our orders. Right, Bria? Yes. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks for watching.